Hello and welcome to another flight model analysis. Today I will be reviewing the P-38G Lightning. And I did this plane before, I believe back in 1.35. But basically if you haven't watched that video, the conclusion that I came to was that the P-38 was probably the most underperforming plane in War Thunder. Uh, since it got a new flight model recently in 1.39, I decided to do a bit of a recap and see if it's still one of, if not the most underperforming planes in War Thunder. And for the tests, I'm going to start with the speed and climb tests. And you can see there is the real life performance of the P-38 G10 in regards to top speed and climb rate. And the P-38 variant we have in game is the P-38 G15. And I don't think the two aircraft had very different performance, so this should be pretty adequate. And you can see here the top speed of the aircraft at sea level is 341 miles per hour. At 5,000 feet, it's 358. At 10,000 feet, it's 377. At 15,000 feet, it's 396. At 20,000 feet, it's 411. And at 25,000 feet, it's 399. And here you can make side-by-side -side comparisons with how the aircraft really performed and how it's performing currently in War Thunder. And as usual, I have included a graph to help you visualize the performance difference. And next up is the climb rate test. And if you didn't notice before, I am using what is shown in game as, as WEP, as War Emergency Power. But in game, the performance of the P-38 on military power depends on you using WEP because you cannot get 3000 RPMs out of the engine without using WEP. So basically, WEP is military power with this plane. And there's a few big problems with that, and I'll tell you more about that after I show you the results. And here's the results. The side-by-side -side comparison of the in-game climb test with the real-world climb performance of the P-38. And you can see here, the P-38 in-game is actually far, far superior to the P-38 uh, in real life. However, this is only with, by using what is shown in-game as war emergency power, even though you only get the performance of military power in real life by using WEP. Uh, there's a few problems with that as I said, and one of those is in real life, if you were using military power with a P-38 on 44 inches of manifold pressure, your engine would not overheat in 10 minutes, but in game when you're using WEP, it will. But also, your P-38 is performing a lot better, at least in the climb, than it would in real life whenever you're using WEP. So it's kind of a double-edged sword. You get engine overheating, but in game you climb a ton better than you should. And now for the roll rate test, I'm going to test the P-38 doing a 0 to 60 degree roll and a 60 to 60 degree roll, both at 280 miles per hour, and then I'm going to test it at 380 miles per hour and compare all those results to how it performed in real life. And you can see in the initial roll, it's overperforming by 8 degrees per second. And in the sustained roll, it's overperforming by 6 degrees per second, not quite as much. And in the high speed roll, it's overperforming by 10 degrees. So overall, I'd say it's pretty significantly overperforming at high speed roll and initial roll rate. Now onto the stall speed test. The uh, aircraft we have in game is weighed in at a gross weight of about 15,900 pounds, so we can safely assume that the stall speed will be somewhere in between the 15,000 and 17,000 pound marker. So I would say probably 97 miles per hour for undercarriage up and probably 71 miles per hour for undercarriage down would be good, a good estimation for what we have in game. So here we have the P-38 with undercarriage and flaps up and it stalls out at 106 miles per hour indicated airspeed. And with undercarriage and flaps down it stalls out pretty much exactly at 77 miles per hour. And obviously the aircraft does stall because I just showed you that it does, but I have to do my obligatory max elevator deflection stall test. And you can see that the aircraft does go into a very violent flat spin uh, that is almost impossible to pull out of. And I think this is pretty uncharacteristic for a P-38. And the thing that's weird about it is that this is not an exception. This is pretty much the tendency to go into a flat spin every time you stall or spin. This is exactly how it's going to react, and it's almost impossible to pull out of if you're flying at low altitudes. And I just think that the forgiving stall characteristics that we had last patch for the P-38 were much more realistic. 
now that most of the actual testing is done, I'm just going to make a few extra points. Uh, one of the first of which is, as you saw there, the P-38, when it's taking off, it seems to have slight initial torque to the left instead of the no torque at all like it used to have. This may have actually been done on purpose, but I'm, I'm not really sure. And this is a chart that shows the top dive speed limits of the aircraft due to compressibility and other things like severe buffeting. And you can see at 10,000 feet and below, the aircraft redlines about where it should, 460 miles an hour. However, at anything higher, like 20,000 feet and 30,000 feet, the aircraft ends up being able to dive much faster than it should because of the lack of compressibility in the game. I'm not saying the aircraft should redline at anything lower than 460 miles an hour as far as breaking apart and buffeting goes, but in terms of actually being able to dive this fast at this altitude, it should not be able to safely do that because of compressibility, but because compressibility isn't in the game yet, you can safely dive up to your red line limit at pretty much any altitude. And lastly, as you can see, this is the same exact chart I just showed you, but in addition to showing the dive speed limits, it also shows the maximum G-load limits of the aircraft at a given altitude and a given speed. And as you can see, the maximum g-forces that you should be able to take in the P-38 is around 6 g's at 10,000 feet at around 300 to 400 miles an hour. And we'll test that in-game. And as you can see, I'm flying at about 460 miles an hour here, and the maximum g-force I take is 13 g's. And that's quite a big difference from 6 g's, so either something is not right with the aircraft's structural limits, it's control stiffening, or perhaps it just wasn't given the g-force, uh, the g-lock simulation that was given to a lot of other planes during the 1.39 patch. Overall, I definitely would not call this a fixed flight model. Uh, it definitely needs a lot of work still. It's much improved on what we had uh, in the last five or so patches, but uh, that wasn't hard to do because it was a complete piece of crap before. Now it's actually overperforming more than it's underperforming. Uh, but yeah, overall, I think it's, it's handling at least is much more realistic and believable. There's obviously, I can't test its turn rate until someone provides me maybe its sustained turn rate in real life. I haven't seen that yet in my experience, so I'll just have to leave it at it seems believable. But to wrap up, I'd say the climb rate of the P-38 needs a lot of work still. Uh, the top speeds, especially at high altitude, needs work. The roll rate, especially the initial and the high speed roll rate, definitely need work. Uh, the stalling in general I think is bad. I think it stalls a little bit too early as well as the fact that it stalls so uncharacteristic to how the plane should stall. The weird aspects about its high speed uh, turn rate and whatever should go away whenever they add compressibility to the game. But for now it's a little bit wonky. But yeah that's just about all I can think of. If you have any questions or opinions feel free to leave them in the comments and I'll check them out. And I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in my next one.